So if you want to figure out how much insulation your home needs, you want to start with figuring out how much insulation your home already has. And to measure that, you need a standard unit of measurement. And we call that in the building science world, R value. And before we dive into what R value is, let's talk about and remind ourselves what insulation does. So insulation will resist the flow of heat between two objects. So it slows down heat movement between two objects that are in contact. An object in this case could be air, which is a gas. It's a very, very light object. <laughs> um, but fundamentally, you have kind of two spaces. Let's say an area is 90 degrees, another area is 70 degrees. They're going to want to equal out in terms of temperature, everything else being equal, right? Insulation slows down things reaching equilibrium or in another way said, temperature equaling out. So I want you to kind of imagine a box, right? And half of that box is kind of hotter, has more hot molecules. The other part of it has less hot molecules. That heat will flow from the area of higher heat concentration to colder heat concentration till things are balanced. Now, if you add a strip of insulation between that hotter area and the cooler area, the insulation will slow down the transfer of heat, it'll slow down kind of the temperature equaling out between those two spaces. And that's what you want because when you're heating up your home, you want to slow down the loss of heat. And in the summertime, when you're keeping it cool, you want to slow down the gain of heat. Okay. So since we talked about how it works, now we want to talk about how we measure insulation, which is in the measurement of a unit called R value. And R value is a measurement of how well something resists conductive heat transfer, right? So the technical definition is that R value is a measurement of how well a two-dimensional barrier resists that flow of heat. So different materials resist heat transfer differently. So metal, for example, is a very poor resistor of heat transfer. It's very good at conducting heat transfer or moving heat. It's got a very, very low R value of about 0.1 or one-tenth, right? Fiberglass, on the other hand, is a relatively effective resistor of heat transfer. It's got a higher R value of R3 per inch. So it takes actually 30 times more time for heat to move through fiberglass insulation than it does through metal. So if we kind of take a look at a lineup here of different materials, you could see that glass is a very, very poor resistor of heat transfer. Concrete transfers heat very easily. Brick we transfer heat very easily. Drywall is a relatively poor uh, resistor of heat transfer. So is wood. And then we get into the insulation materials like fiberglass, which is uh, you know R3 per inch, cellulose, which is R3.5 or four, and even some foams like an open cell foam or a closed cell foam, which is R6 per inch. That would be 60 times more effective at resisting heat flow than something like glass. Now, the thicker the material is also increases R value. So if you have one inch of fiberglass that has an R value of three per inch, every time you add on another inch, you're gonna add on another three of R. So if you go two inches, that would be an R value of six. If you had 10 inches of fiberglass insulation, you would have 10 times three, which is R30 worth of insulation. So the thicker that material is, the more effectively it resists that heat transfer. Okay. So now we're going to talk about a very, very interesting concept, which is weighted R values. What does that mean? Well, sometimes different surfaces have different levels of R value. How do you figure out how everything works together? Do you just average it? Well, you can't do that because heat travels the path of least resistance. Let me show you what I mean. Imagine looking down at, a, at an attic floor, right? That's kind of the ceiling, but you're looking down from above and it's got fiberglass, which is R3 per inch of insulation at a level of 10 inches deep, right? So the total R value of that insulated area is R30. Now, imagine again, looking at this area and we remove half of that insulation. 
So what do you think the combined or weighted R value of this attic floor is? So 50% has R value of R30. The other 50%, let's just say that's a piece of drywall, has an R value of R1. So most people think the correct answer is the average of the two of them, about R15. That would be inaccurate. Believe it or not, the actual answer is da 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 R2. Mind blown. Wait, that's a 93% reduction in insulation effectiveness. How is that possible? Let's do another one, okay? It'll make more and more sense as you look at more and more examples. So imagine you have an attic that has 96% of the area of R30 and only 4% of the area having R1. What do you think the total average is? Well, some people would say, oh, well, you're probably losing, you know, 4%. Maybe it goes down to R25. In this case, the total area's R value is only R12. That's a 60%, almost a 60% loss. So again, heat travels the path of least resistance. Now, there's a really fancy formula where you use the inverses to come up with the um, additive of the different inverses. We're not going to go off through that today, but just as a kind of understanding of how important it is to make sure you have an effective and consistent insulation barrier. Let's look at one more example. Imagine you have an attic floor and 80% of the area is R30. 20% uh, of the area is R5, right? There's a little bit of insulation. The total R value of that area is actually R15, right? So it's a 50% loss, even with only 20% having an R value of R5. So the sum of these examples and what this math really proves is that insulation is only as effective as it's installed. You have to have a consistent thermal barrier, a consistent amount of insulation for it to work well. So when you start to ask the question, how much insulation do you need? It's really not just important to see how much you need, it's really important to see how well you need it to be installed. So you may say, okay, I get the point, but you know, my insulation's fine. Why would I be missing a large amount of insulation? Well, I want you to imagine, right? You're looking down at your attic floor again, and you forget that you actually have an attic hatch. And attic hatches are almost never insulated, right? So there you go, you have an attic hatch that's you know 3% right there of missing insulation. Then you have an electrician that comes in. The electrician installs some can lights. He moves the bats of insulation and you have some more gaps. Then you have a plumber come in. The plumber has to run some new pipes down and those pipes um, are located where insulation is. The HVAC contractor runs a new duct. The audio video guy runs in some speakers, wire. Next thing you know, you have an attic insulation level that looks like Swiss cheese. And the losses could be anywhere from 50% to 75% or more. So here's another really common example of when you might lose effectiveness of your attic insulation. So your framing in your attic is one and a half inches wide by five and a half, half inches deep if you had two by sixes on your attic floor. The R value of that would be R1 for wood times five and a half inches, be about R5.5. And if you add up all those framing components, that may make up 20% of the area. So now you have 20% of the area of 5.5, 80% of R30 before you even started. That's a 50% loss in insulation. So it's not just important um, how much insulation you have, it's very, very important how well it is installed. If you wanna learn more about how to install insulation properly, I highly recommend you check out Home Energy Academy. We have a full online course to really walk you through all the proper steps for insulating your attic. Okay, so let's talk about how much you need. Well, historically, attic insulation, wall insulation, and floor insulation levels were a lot lower than they are today. You know, R30 was kind of a typical attic insulation level. Walls were typically about R13, sometimes as low as R11, and floors were about R19 as a standard. Now, it varies in... Um, climate zone to climate zone. So in different states and different regions, you'll have different standards. Uh, now, uh, values have increased probably 20, 30% above just about 10 years ago. And you're gonna see a baseline in most cases of R38 in the attic, 
all the way up to R49. In some cases, you'll see attic insulation requirements all the way up to R60. Um, in some cases, uh, you'll see wall insulation all the way up to R25. And floor insulation is now kind of, the bar has been risen to levels that are close to like R30. So, um, you know, that's kind of a general sense of the insulation levels you're gonna to wanna to see in your home. Okay, so now that you know how much insulation you need, you wanna establish how much insulation you already have. And so we put together a really cool tool for you. Very simple, if you go to homeenergyacademy.com and you click on calculators um, and then go to existing attic insulation calculator, you'll get free access to this cool little calculator. You just use the drop down to designate what type of insulation you have. Um, it'll show you the R value per inch of that insulation and then you can enter the depth of insulation. Basically, this is gonna be the standard depth. And then based on the quality of coverage and the percentage of gaps, it will calculate how effective that R value is and reduction levels from if it was ideal, right? So, you know, if it's perfect, obviously it's gonna be equal to the um, like standard R value times the inches. But if you have fair or poor insulation, you can see that reduction is very dramatic. The other thing I would recommend as well is if you go to checklists, we have a free attic insulation checklist that you can download and um, it'll give you a ton of great tools and tips and things to verify when you're going about an attic insulation project. Anyways, it's very hard to overestimate the impact that attic insulation can make in your home. You wanna make sure you do it right the first time. So please do use these tools so that you can be empowered to get your attic insulation complete and create a comfy, energy-efficient home.